Ladies and gentlemen, as I promised you yesterday, in our studio right now is Ken Carter, sometimes called the Mad Canadian. Alongside Ken Carter is Ruben Pucarvi of the Pierrefonds Medical Center, a gentleman who practices hypnotherapy with the medical profession. And as I mentioned to you a couple of days ago, Ken Carter, who at this moment is not hypnotized, he'll talk to you in a couple of minutes, has decided to come here to find out what makes a man like Ken Carter tick. Ken, can you come a little closer here to the microphone and tell the people hello and some other things that may be on your mind before you are induced into hypnotherapy by Ruben Bacarvi? Well, Ted, you know, earlier we talked, and I was in Mr. Bacarvi's office with your presence, and uh, the feeling that I had, I had, I had, I had. relaxation couldn't have been explained, could have, you couldn't even have put it in better words than anybody else when you were there yourself and saw the relaxing situation that I was in. I can only say I'm looking forward to this because out of this I hope to possibly find out the reason why. Why does Ken Carter, Evil Knievel, Muhammad Ali, and so on do what we do? Okay, uh, allow me to interrupt you here for one moment please, Ken Carter. Dan McGarity tells me that there is a problem with your microphone, and uh, Mike Eccles, our chief engineer, is on the case. It's okay now. Also, let me... Yeah, the microphone's okay now, Ken. Let me also paint this picture. Beside you, of course, as I mentioned, is Ruben Bacarvi. Sitting beside Ruben Bacarvi is your manager, Charlie Hart, and we are also very pleased to have the man from the Journal de Montréal and the Sunday Express, photographer... Ace photographer, if I may call him that. Toto Jingra is here to photograph the session as it moves along. And also, we're delighted to have a crew from the National Film Board. Len Evans is here from the National Film Board. Bob Forche, and I would imagine a crew of five or six other people. There are lights set up all over the place. There's even a light now in the room where Dan McGarity is. So without any further ado, let me call... Ruben Picarvi to the microphone. Ruben, and tell us exactly what are we going to do today? Well, actually, in the area of uh, hypnosis, there's a specific routine or an induction which causes age regression, which simply means, in lay language, bringing back the person to the source of uh, what bugs him or what bothers him, so to speak. When I say bugs, I'm trying to sort of bring out the the emphasis to the fact that hypnotism is not black magic and I'm not going to sit here and you know try to convey a message of of big words I want everybody listening be it professional or layman to understand there's always a force that maintains a symptom once the force is removed the symptom disappears simply if Ken is interested in knowing why he's having this specific problem it's because he himself is anxious to know. If he wasn't anxious to know himself and voluntarily, you know, uh, willing to go ahead with this here, then he wouldn't be here in the first place. Simply, obviously, there's something on this gentleman's mind, and he's always searched for the answer. Why does he want to do this specific way of, you know, entertaining the people or perhaps entertaining himself? be it that he is getting consolation or filling an emotional gap or cavity based on his uh, upbringing. Perhaps he has a neurotic depressive condition where he in turn does not have the personality or psychological makeup to cope with the stresses of life and this is a replacement of the latter. Then I'm here to find that out and I'm sure Ken is anxious too. All right, Ruben Picarvi and Ken Carter, we'll break for a moment. I will attempt to find Kelly Ricard in traffic. The Laurentian auto route traffic slows down just before Avi Bouassa, and it stays sluggish to the Laval Tolls. Laurentian Boulevard is heavy until you get past Canadair. If you're heading up to Pont Vieux, you'll find the La Jeunesse approach a bit slow. Kelly Ricard, CFOX. The show today will be unusual in the fact that it is the first time that I have ever been involved with something like this i will merely sit here as you are at home and i'll be listening as this unfolds to find out a little bit more about ken carter daredevil jumper sometimes called the mad canadian why does ken carter do the things that he does and what has pushed him on to 
become a household name in North America, and before it's all over, one year from now, Ken Carter hopefully will be the only man to jump Lake Champlain one mile. But you'll hear all of that as it unfolds. Nothing has been rehearsed here. I have no idea what will happen from this point on, except the commercials will be here. I'll do the commercials, and I want to tell you about National Cable Vision right now. National Cable Vision and Cable TV have gotten together, and they can offer you outstanding entertainment if you're a subscriber. I have a couple of numbers for you to call. National Cable Vision, 273-5121, or Cable TV, 731-7861. If you live in a specific area, and if they have cable there, you will see outstanding entertainment. You'll also get the American channels much more clearly, 3, 5, and 8, and of course the local channels, 2, 6, 10. And I'll tell you something else, as a public service, both cable companies, National Cable Vision and Cable TV, are bringing you the Crime Commission as a public service on a daily basis. Motel Raphael on St. James Street West tells you this. If you're planning a wedding reception or a bowling little league or anything like that, Conrad Demeray has a beautiful, beautiful convention room. We had... A very fine, fine affair there a couple of weeks ago. must be a month now. We honored Gus Mel at the Motel Raphael, and what a night that was. So for groups of 20 to 150, Conrad Demeray is ready to do his thing for you. Motel Raphael, for your wedding reception or whatever. St. James Street West, just west of Cavendish. When you've got the Bobby look, you really feel like living. Ready to go, ready to know just what the world is giving. The Bobby look makes you feel beautiful and free. Get into Bobby's jeans, be the who you want to be. Get into Bobby's jeans, 150 Harwood Boulevard in Dorian. Name brand jeans, Lee, H-I-S, T-K, U-F-O, Wrangler, Levi, GWG jeans now priced at $9.95. Brush denim suits, 1995. Now at Bobby's Jeans, embroidered t-shirts, Indian blouses and dresses. Slip into a shirt or sweater to go with your new jeans. Get into Bobby's Jeans, 150 Harwood Boulevard in Dorian. Bobby look makes you feel beautiful and free. Get into Bobby's Jeans, be the who you want to be. You're listening to Sports Rap with Ted Teban on CFOX. Radio 1470. We are back in a very crowded sports rap studio at CFOX and Ruben Picarvi, the microphone is yours. Well, thank you very much. And now... Hold uh, on. Hey, I'm very sorry. With all of this excitement, with all of this excitement... No, no, I did find uh, Kelly in traffic, didn't I? With all these people in here, I'm not used to working like this. Usually it's McGarrity and I working here alone together. Okay, Ruben, do your thing. My memory's going. <laughs> Okay, well, first of all, um, what I'm going to do is uh, basically an induction firstly, and if there's anybody out in the uh, listening audience uh, hearing this, uh, I don't want them to pay too close attention because next thing you know, we'll have everybody out in the listening uh, public, uh, you know, falling asleep. Although I doubt whether this can happen if they really tune their mind into uh, the thinking that they don't want to fall asleep, but they're going to concentrate specifically on the what's going on here. Okay, first of all, we're just going to move the microphone away a bit, and we'll um, we'll zoom in on it as soon as it's necessary. I want you to put your feet together in front of you, Ken, just as you did last time when I tried you for susceptibility in my office. Okay, when I count to three. When I count to three, I want you to take a deep, deep breath now. One, two, three, take a deep, deep breath. That's right. Now let it out slowly and just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Now you find, as you sit there in the darkness with your eyes closed, listening to my voice, you recall that same moment of relaxation, Ken, more now than ever before. As you listen to my voice, you find that in the top, top part of your head, you feel a tingling, relaxing sensation come over you. You can feel it now, sure, same as last time, as it creeps down through the back part of your neck, through your back, through every muscle in your thighs, knees, calves, right down to the very, very tips of your toes. 
and as I count to three, your head begins to feel very, very heavy. One, two, and your head begins to fall forward with a heavy, heavy weight. Three, and your head comes down completely. In the back part of your neck over here and the top part of your head, you feel a relaxing sensation come over you. You can feel it now as it creeps down through the back part of your neck again. It loosens every muscle, every nerve, every bit of strength that keeps your head up is all gone now. And your arms, I lift them up and they fall down with a heavy, heavy weight. And as the arms fall down, they get very heavy, even heavier than before. This arm begins to fall down with a heavy, heavy weight. And as your arms fall down, you too fall down deeper and deeper to sleep. Your arms are limp, loose, and relaxed, just complete dead weight, and your arms fall down with a heavy weight. And you do hear my voice, don't you? Nod your head. You do hear my voice, don't you? Nod your head with more expression so I can tell. Yes, you do. You hear my voice and no one else's. Mm -hmm. Any other voices you hear or any other disturbing noises you hear will only put you down deeper and deeper to sleep. And your eyelids now are closed down tight, Ken, tighter than they ever were before. In a moment or so, you're going to try and open your eyes, but the more you try and open them, the more tightly they shut together. And you don't want to open them, of course not, because the moment you open them, that's the moment you deprive yourself of this wonderful, of this refreshing, of this relaxing sleep. Every part of your back part of your neck is totally relaxed. Your shoulders relax through your arms, right down to the tips of your fingers. You relax more and more. And as you sit up straight, you can lift up your head up. You can keep it up there. You have total control. When I want it to fall down, or when I tell you it falls down heavily, it falls down. But right now, it's strong, and it stays up there. And now your eyelids are closed down tight, Ken, tighter than they ever were before. And you're going to try and open your eyes now, but the more you try and open them, the more tightly they shut together. You see, try and open them, force them, really fight, fight hard, and you'll find that the eyebrows move, but not the eyelids. When I count to three, they tighten up completely. One, two, three. And now you fight very, very hard, really hard, Ken, fight to open them, and you'll find them impossible to open. But you don't have to try anymore. You don't have to strain, and your head at the snap of my finger falls forward very heavily. And as your head falls down... You two fall down deeper and deeper to sleep. This arm here, this arm here, Ken, for some strange reason, you feel for some strange reason a numbness come over your arm right from the top of your shoulder to the tips of your finger. A numbness comes over your arm and you find that for some strange reason you feel no sensation whatsoever in that arm. You find as I squinch out this cigarette you feel no pain whatsoever and your arm falls down with a heavy, heavy weight. And as your arm falls down, you too fall down deeper and deeper to sleep. And you sit up straight. You have perfect capability, perfect strength, perfect ability to sit up straight. And for some strange reason now, Ken, your eyelids are closed down. And you hear my voice, don't you? Let me hear you say yes, loud and clear. Yes, you hear my voice. Yeah. Yes, you do. And you feel terrific and you feel relaxed and your chest relaxes. Mm. Yes, you do feel good. Would you tell me in your own words how you feel? How do you feel right now? <laughs> yes, could you tell me, Ken? You can speak to me. I hear your voice and no one else's. I'm listening to you totally with complete attention. I'm paying all attention to you. And you do trust me, don't you, Ken? Mm. Sure you do, or you wouldn't be in this state in the first mm. place. Because I'm your friend and you know that I'm trying to help you to find yourself to perhaps... Mm. I'm not doing any psychiatry here or regression to the point where I'm going to analyze you and cause disruptive emotional material mm -hmm. to hurt you in any way at all or ruin your career. You know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. But basically, you did tell me one thing one time, and it was quite important. You said, and I can't really find this too easy to believe, because not too many people submit themselves to that point, but yet you said totally and absolutely you belong to the public. Mm -hmm. Because the chance of anything happening, such as a flat tire in the midst of your takeoff or whatever it is, or rocket default or whatever it is, anything is liable to happen, and you know this in the work that you're doing. The law of averages are very, very favorable because of engineering and because of, quote, all kinds of looking into the picture before you do make that takeoff, whatever it is, Lake Champlain in 76, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to find that we're going to break for a commercial any moment. But when we break for a commercial, as I keep talking to you, Ken, you do not hear anything more than my voice. Mm. My voice only. Any other voices or sounds or disturbing sounds, interruptions, such as commercials or anything, will only put you down deeper and deeper to sleep. And the healing processes, your hand will feel completely at ease. No blisters will form. You'll find yourself relaxed with every breath of air you take. 
you find yourself falling deeper and deeper to sleep. It is 14 minutes before the hour of 6. We will break for two minutes of news. It's 17 degrees Celsius and drizzly at 545. We're short on beef inspectors. I'm Paul Talbot. This is CFOX News. We've got 49 beef inspectors. Their boss says all the men are doing a good job, but considering all the work they've got to do, it could be a lot better. There are 12,000 places for the 49 city inspectors to keep tabs on. The provincial government's under pressure to hire on at least another 15. Another day in the newspaper strike, and another day of bargaining talks. This latest round has once again failed to come up with any kind of a breakthrough. Guild President Sterling Taylor tells us there could be more talks tomorrow. That's been left up for management to decide. Officials with Concordia University have been keeping an eye on the Grey Nuns property. The convent could still become part of the campus. Rector John O'Brien says he hopes the province sees the light and lets educators take over instead of Swiss developers. City detectives are chasing clues following a pair of armed robberies this afternoon. One hit a Bank of Commerce branch along Lacadie. Gunmen took off with more than $3,500. A supermarket along Lulu has been knocked off also. Thieves made good their getaway with $1,500. How are you doing getting home? With a look at Montreal traffic, here's Kelly. The Mercier Bridge is still in very bad shape. The accident that caused all the trouble was removed some time ago, but the traffic is still blocked solid. Highway 2 and 20 outbound is very slow from the Notre Dame Street exit over to Ville Saint-Pierre interchange. Traffic on the inbound Bonaventure is heavy as you head towards the Champlain Bridge, and the downtown Trans-Canada is working well. Kelly Ricard, CFOX. CFOX weather. Showers, thunder showers, and windy tonight, low 13. Cloudy in the morning, sunny in the afternoon, high tomorrow 23. Some sun and continued mild on Saturday. The relative humidity, 87%. Winds are south at 9. In Montreal, it's 17 degrees Celsius. That's CFOX News. I'm Paul Talbot. We are back here at Sports Wrap with... Ruben Picarvi, who works with the medical profession as a hypnotherapist, and Ken Carter, daredevil, the mad Canadian he's called. And I would safely say right now that Ken Carter is under hypnosis, Ruben. Am I am I correct? That's correct. We could also we we should also paint this mental picture that you took a cigarette, a lighted cigarette from Charlie Hart. Ken Carter's manager, and to to show the assembled people here in the studio, those from uh, the National Film Board, Toto Jingra was here of the Journal de Montreal, that Ken Carter would feel no pain. You actually put the cigarette out on his hand, and Ken Carter felt no pain. Am I correct now, Ruben Bacarvi, when I say that he cannot hear my voice? Only that your... is right. I have blotted out. I have obliterated it from his it pick up as far as the uh, the process of hearing is concerned. This can give you a good idea of how beneficial hypnosis can be in the world of medicine as it is uh, in my work at the Pierre Fond Medical Center, such as let's assume that somebody had a condition of a conversion hysteria, which would mean a problem related to, let's say, hysterical deafness. If hypnosis can be used to induce a deafness or a situation where he does not hear anything, then just think of how beneficial hypnosis would be in the world of medicine for somebody who actually suffered such a situation. Mm. This is why I want, right now, Ken is sort of in agreement and nodding his head. Mm -hmm. He's perfectly in, in agreement with what we're saying because he does hear what I'm saying. And he's perfectly aware, as a matter of fact, if he smiles or he reacts as he would in the waking state, uh, there's nothing miracle about this. There's no miracle or black magic about this because in the waking state or the sleeping state, uh, you'll find the hypnotic sleeping state, you'll find that there's no change if there were to be an EEG or, or an electroencephalogram take, such as brainwave test. But you'll find in a regular sleeping state that we usually go to when we go to bed at night, uh, there is a difference uh, in the EEG take. So what we're talking about here is an artificial sleep produced by the power of suggestion, mainly induced by the suggestion. If one can will somebody or some, somebody willing to themselves that they cannot pick up a chair. It's basically your imagination that causes you to be strong to begin with. If you tell yourself, Ted, that you don't want to pick up a chair strong enough and you can't do it, 
even if it's very, very light, you still will not pick it up. So basically, you are the command of what hypnotism is. Ruben Bacarvey, I'll come back to you in a moment, and uh, I... am I'm not a long-time Montrealer, but I do recall having read a story some years ago when the Montreal Royals were were still here in the city that you you were able to hypnotize some of the players on that ball club, and I'd like to ask you about it as soon as I come back. I want to tell the people about Dixieville Furniture in the Point Claire Shopping Center. Dixieville Furniture realizes that Father's Day is this Sunday, and picking a gift for someone's father could be a bit of a difficult task. So they have a suggestion for you. Dixieville Furniture has a large selection of recliners, rockers, special comfortable chairs, famous make chairs, all styles like this. Recliners, rocker recliners, swivel rocker recliners, even reclining chairs that only need a couple of inches of space from the floor. And at Dixieville Furniture, you can expect and get free delivery, free layaway. You can look for the big colorful sign in the Point Claire Shopping Center, Highway 2 and 20 and St. John's Road. It simply says Dixieville, and the store is filled with tremendous bargains. In that same Point Claire Shopping Center is the Silhouette Health Spa for ladies only. Remember, for ladies only. Equipped with saunas, whirlpools, and a lot of apparatus that you simply could not have at home. So if you'd like a lovelier you, or perhaps even a new you, why not drop in and talk to Yvonne Atkinson at the Silhouette Health Spa in the Point Claire Shopping Center, the same shopping center that also houses Dixieville Furniture. Okay, Reuben, what about the Montreal Royals? Uh, this was where, uh, I, I would say, when Jackie Robinson was on the... Um on the mound or whatever. Uh, this was the second very, baseman. Very second baseman. Right or whatever. Well, no, when he was on the. Uh, I, I mean, on the base. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was actually the last game of the Royals many, many years ago at the Lormier Downs, where they were really running a bad, bad streak of bad, a uh, streak of bad luck. And uh, I was asked by one of the managers who I met at uh, Ben's Delicatessen here in Montreal, where all the show people or entertainers or people hang out. And uh, I was asked whether, for publicity or for the aid of the Royals, whether I would do some hypnosis with some of the main important uh, uh, players of the team. And I did so, and they did win the game, but there was a lot of exposure and there was a humiliation that they had to depend on hypnosis to go through winning a game. But that's what actually happened. All right, I'll let you go back to Ken Carter and to paint the picture again. Ken seems very relaxed. We have people here from the National Film Board in our studio. The clicks that you hear behind are other cameras and so on, and that's fine. In the other studio where Dan McGarity usually is alone, there are some more people. And before I go back to Ruben... McCarvey, let me see if I can find Kelly Ricard. Highway 2 and 20 inbound is much better now. There's just a slight delay at 11. The outbound 2 and 20 is easing slightly, too. On the Trans-Canada outbound, there's some oil or gas in the right lane at Sources Road, so for heaven's sake, take it carefully. The Dakari Expressway northbound is very heavy from the Snowden underpass up to the Dakari Circle, and southbound, the Dakari is still very slow from the Circle to Queen Mary Road. That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow morning around 10 after 7. Kelly Ricard, CFOX. You're a radio business here, but yet we have not forgotten about you, and I will not leave you flat. You understand me? Mm -hmm. At this right. moment, Ruben Picarvi just made a an aside to Ken Carter. Ruben Picarvi, can you tell us what you said? Yes, I told Ken that he should not feel <coughs> left out. Not that he's a lonely little boy, but in the state, <coughs> whilst under hypnosis, somebody becomes very vulnerable because they are going back to their earlier age and no matter what it is, no matter how strong a person is in the present in their earlier age, they're still children. And he could possibly take on a reaction of being left out or being evaded or being, uh, you know, uh, being somebody prone to not getting any love or attention. So I was just instilling the confidence in his mind that we were all around and that if we were moving away with our voices or paying attention somewhere else, such as commercials, the the livelihood of, of any radio station, that he should understand that we're not evading him. We are all well aware, and he's the main reason why we're here. All right, Ruben, that's Confidence. good. Yeah, I wanted you to explain the, that to our audience. Richard Arliss, uh, Alan Arliss, rather, of Arliss Photographers, our official CFOX photographers, has arrived, and uh, he will be taking some pictures as well. And... Uh, 
I do want you to understand that according to Reuben Picarvi, my voice cannot be heard by Ken Carter at all. He doesn't hear any commotion in the background at all with the photographers or the National Film Board people or anything like that. He only hears the voice of Reuben Picarvi. Therefore, I want to tell the people now that Peretz will be open until 11 o'clock tonight, and they have all of the things that perhaps you have forgotten, like milk, ice cream, even ketchup, breakfast cereals for tomorrow morning. And I think when Reuben Picarvi finally brings Ken Carter out of his deep sleep, as he calls it, right here on this show, between now and 7.30, maybe we will have a Peretz cold drink for Ken Carter, and I'm sure that he'll he'll like that as well. Okay, Peretz will be open till 11 o'clock tonight for anything that you may have forgotten. This weekend, Napierville International Speedway is having a doubleheader. It will start Saturday night. This is for you racing fans because here we have Ken Carter in our studio in a deep sleep under hypnosis with Ruben Picarvi. Saturday night at Napierville, where Ken Carter has been last year. This is what will happen. It is the first night of the 1975 season, the first night. It's the seventh annual Penn's Oil Championships. It starts at 8 o'clock, and Napierville and Ron Bracken will have eight supercharged funny cars racing under the stars. The show has attracted some of the sport's top names in the supercharged ranks. For example... Glenn Laser has been racing since the mid-60s with many national record-holding gassers. Now, I'm sure that if Ken Carter could hear me now, Reuben Picarvi, he would be nodding because he knows all of these people. But he can't hear me, can he? When I count to five, Ken, you will hear the names that Ted Tevan mentions. One, two, three, four, five. All right, veteran Glenn Laser. He has a Pennzoil entry, a new Pinto powered by a 480 cubic Chevy engine. Other entries include Bruce Larson, Cassidy, Pat Walsh, Charlie Minnick. Mm. You know those names? So now Ken Carter hears my voice. Okay, Reuben. Now you do not hear Ted anymore. And now you do hear my voice, as always, as you'll always hear my voice, because I am in total and complete control of what you feel and what you're going to feel like. You relax more and more. I want you to tell me in your own words, Ken, how do you feel right now with all that you feel the truth, be it good or bad? What do you feel like right now, Ken? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. In which way would you decipher beautiful? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what do you describe right now as beautiful? Mm, peace. 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 Serenity. Serenity. Does your hand hurt you in any way, Ken? Mm. No. Did you know what I did to your hand? Mm. You don't know. Well, that's good. I'll tell you when you wake up. Falling deeper and deeper to sleep with every breath of air you take. And now, I want you to picture this, that your mind is going back in age. Your thoughts go back in age... Your mind starts sinking back, Ken, from 37, 36, 35. We'll even take a bigger jump, 30. This is not the area that made you what you are today. We have to go much earlier than that, don't we? Mm -hmm. Sure. I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me, Ken, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Four. Four? Four sisters. Yes, and would you tell me the category, boys or girls, like, for example, underneath you, the ages under you, what ages would they be? Uh, Elaine. Elaine, yes. 28, 28. Right. I want you to tell me, starting from the youngest to the eldest, including yourself, I want you to rattle off the names and the ages. No second names, please, just first names. Gail. Right. 20. Right. Butch. Right. 22. Right. Your recall is tremendous, and you start recalling faster now. Uh, Lois. Yes. 28. Right. Elaine. Yes. 30. 30. Yes. And Joan. She's older than me. I see. You are age what? 37. 37. 
Therefore, there is Gail, Butch, Lois, Elaine, Ken, and Joan. Mm. We've got five, a happy family of five, all from the same maternal father and mother? No. I see. Which ones of these children could be from another marriage? Gail. Gail, yes. And Butch. And Butch. And therefore, there is Lois, age 29, mm. and Elaine, age 33, 34 approximately. Is that mm. right in correcting yeah. you? Yeah. All right, and Ken, you're 37, and you have Joan, 41. Am I right yes. in surmising that Lois is the one that you get along with, so to speak, the worst, where you've always had problems? Mm. But mm. Elaine has been a real problem to you, has she not? Please. Yeah. Am I right in surmising this, that due to the age difference where Lois is 28 and 29 and Elaine is 33 and 34, there's always that maternal, that maternal rivalry or that, mm. you might say, the, the children jealous of each other, mm. the sibling rivalry. Mm. Am I right in yeah. surmising that Elaine was a bedwetter? Mm. Yes. Were you a bedwetter? No, but I slept with her. But you slept with her, I mm. see. I see. You don't mean that in the context of sleeping with her because of relationships such mm. as incest. Are you talking about a background? I do remember in some questioning before this procedure, you told me that your background was related to a poor upbringing. You lived in a very, very... What about your father? I want you to tell me, Ken, what about your father? Was he a father and a friend, or was he, in other words, was he a buddy to you, or was he somebody who just never had time for his son? And he was never there. He was never there, mm. due to what? I don't know. Was there any separation or breakup between mm. your mother and father? There yes. was. Yes. Divorce? Separation? Yes. yes. In other words, your father, being out of the picture, caused you to be a boy amidst... Lois, mm. Elaine, the one with a bedwetting problem, and Joan, 41. That's three women, plus, on top of that, your mother, another woman. Beautiful. You Beautiful, huh? Mm. You never seem to have any identification with anybody such as a man. Mm. What about the streets that you came from? You came from the Griffintown area, did you, mm. or Verdun? What mm. area did you grow up in? Uh, uh. Your mind West. recalls, you recall, you start recalling. What area did you grow Saint up Henry. in? St. Henry, I want mm. you to tell me, what was your age when you lived in St. Henry? Mm, 16. 16. And what was your age when you lived before that? In other words, did you live in St. Henry up until 16 years of age? Mm -hmm. What was your address on St. Henry? You got recall now, you can remember. 1444 Guy Avenue. 1444 Guy, mm. I see. What was the house like when you went in? Was it the first floor, second floor, mm, or third floor? No. It was a downstairs? Third floor. A third floor. By the back. I see, by the back. Mm. I want you to describe, as soon as you entered into that door, what did you see? The moment you entered into that door of that St. Henry residence, kitchen. what did you see? A kitchen straight mm. away. Kitchen and a bathroom. You remember everything, don't you? Mm. You remember everything. Your mind will recall more mm. as you go back now from the age of 30. You're 29, you're 28, Ken. Mm. You're 27, 26. I want you to tell me. Bring yourself in your mind back more and more. 25, you see a motion picture screen in front of you, Ken. Mm. You see your life, your life. This is the Ken Carter motion picture screen, or should I call you Kenneth Gordon Polachek? Mm -hmm. That's your real name, isn't mm. it? Kenneth Gordon Polachek. Mm. Do you like when people call you Kenneth Gordon? Mm. No. 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 You like when people call you Ken Carter. Mm. Why? Because Ken Carter gives you strength, is that right? It's beautiful. Ken Carter is beautiful because mm. Ken Carter is strong. Mm. Were you a strong kid as a youngster or were you a weakling, Ken? Not strong. Not strong. Mm. Did the guys beat you up? Yeah. Yes, I see. Mm. Did you always have to prove yourself? Mm-hmm. When did you leave school, Ken? Mm. At what age? Mm. What grade did you leave school? Mm. You don't want to... Four. Four. What school was it? Belmont. Belmont School. What was the teacher's name? Mary. Mary. Miss Mary? Or yeah. Miss, Miss Mary, you seem mm. to be hostile toward her. Did you like her? Mm. Why didn't you like her? What did she do to you? 
Just speak up now. Your mind, you're not going to get in any way disrupted. Your mind will be able to recall in which way did she irritate you, Ken? I didn't want to go to school. You didn't want to go to school. Why? Why? I don't know. You just don't know. Mm. You wanted to leave that place as soon as possible. Why? Because was it domineering? Mm. Did it dominate you? They didn't like me. Either. They didn't like you? Did mm. you feel that nobody liked you at that mm. time? Mm. Were you thin? Were you fat? Were you... Oh. What were you like? Mm. Your mind? You, you are laughing now. I want you to tell me what you're laughing at. You're going uh, back in your age. I was. Go on, tell me. Skinny, cross-eyed, Skinny, cross-eyed, bow-legged, yes. What else? What else? Jeez. Skinny, cross-eyed, bow-legged. What else? Did the guys beat you up? Yeah. I see. Did you ever take care of them? Boy, with a stick. Yes, what kind of stick? Hmm. Wood. I see. Hmm. What did you do with that wooden stick? Chased them. Chase them. Right out of the alleyway. I see. Deeper and deeper mm. to sleep. Much deeper to sleep than you ever did before. With every breath of air you take. And we go back now further. We go back further in your age. Twenty. Nineteen. Mm. Your voice starts getting to the point where you were. At nineteen mm. years of age. Eighteen, seventeen, sixteen. Your mind recalls. You see that motion oh. picture screen in front of you. 15, 14, and your vocal cords and your mind and your thoughts create your voice to be the way it was then. 13, say something to me, Ken Carter or Kenneth of 14 years of age. Go on, tell me. Uh -huh. Hi, what are you thinking of? Where are you now in your mind? Where, where are you at? Notre Dame and Guy Street. What are you doing at Notre Dame and Guy, Ken? Just messing around. Just goofing off. Messing around? Mm. Are you with the rest of the guys, yeah. or you're just sort of... Are you with the rest of the no, guys? No. no, you're alone. Mm. Have you always been alone, Ken? Mm. I see. Deeper and deeper to sleep. And you told me that you were alone just now. You mm. don't like being alone, do you? Mm, no more. No more. Mm. You're no more alone, mm. is that right? Mm. No more alone, I see. Mm. What do you mean, no more alone? Explain it to me when you say you're no more alone. People. People, lots of people, right? Lots of people. Everywhere. Where? Where are the people? Where are the people? Everywhere. Everywhere. People. You like the people mm. everywhere, don't you? Why yeah. do you like them? Why do you like them? Because they like me. They like mm. you. I see. You were never liked, were you? Mm. Who didn't like you the most, Ken? Who didn't like you the most? Frenna. 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 Who's Frenna? Uh, I want you to tell me. Who's Frenna? He was a landlord. Yes, what happened? He was a landlord, and oh, what happened? He used to blame me for everything. Garbage. Garbage on the street. Did he ever hit you? No, you know, no. But what did he blame you for? His voice. Yes, what was his voice like? What Pierce. was his voice like? Piercing. You know, just, I didn't like him. I see. And what did you mm. ever do to him? Mm. Nothing? Did you want to do things to him? Mm. Did you ever promise anything to your mind that you would do to him? Anything tick -tack. to him? Tick tack. Tick tack on tick -tack his window. Tick tack on his window. I see. <laughs> tick tack. I see. Tick tack. Uh, eh? Right on his window. I see. That was <laughs> funny. You found that funny, didn't you? No. Your mind, 14. Oh. You're 13. You're going back more and more. 12 years of age. Your voice becomes the 12, the 11. The ten years of age. I want you to tell me something, Ken. You're ten years of age. What's going on through your mind right now? What do you see? Talk to me in the voice that you did at the time when you were ten years of age. Family. Family. What about the family, Ken? Tell me about the family. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Sisters. What? Sisters. Sisters. All kinds of sisters around you? Did you like a lot of sisters around you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why did you like them around you? Effort. I helped them. I helped them. In which way did you help them? Across the street. You helped them? Going to the movie, movies, in the I church, see. in the church, in the basement. You were sort of acting like their father, weren't you? Mm. Yes. Mm. You were acting like their father. You took mm. on the father image, the mm. one that you didn't have, isn't that mm. right? Yeah. You missed a father, didn't you? Yeah. You played the father part, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. What did you do for your sisters besides taking them to churches, movies, and so on? Yeah, look after them. You looked after yeah. them. Why? Where was your mother at the time? Working. Why? What? Oh, my poor mother. What kind of work did she do, Ken? Three jobs. 
three jobs. I want you to tell me what were the three jobs, Ken? She worked. She worked. Washing, cleaning furniture. Yes. In the fruit fruit place. Right. Near the railroad track. Yes. And what else? In the restaurant. Restaurant. What else? Victory. What was the name of the restaurant? Victory. 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 Yeah. Where was the Victory? Yes, victory. I know. Where was the Victory restaurant? Notre Dame and Guy. Notre Dame mm -hmm. and Guy. Mm -hmm. That's where you used to hang out, right? Oh, right by the restaurant. Sure. I see. Mm -hmm. Being close to Mother. Yeah. I see. Boston Pie. Boston Pie. Yes. Mm -hmm. After school. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we're going back. Your mind and your voice becomes younger and younger because you lived the part. Ten. Nine. Eight. Did anything of a traumatic experience happen to you, Ken? Mm. Seven. Six. Mm. I want you to talk to me. You're six, seven, eight, six, seven years of age. What's your name? Carter. Carter. Ken Carter. Yes, your voice gets to the point now. Your voice matches your mind, and your mind matches your voice as to the point that you're at right now. In your thoughts, you're seven years of age. I want you to tell me something. Talk to me as you were seven years of age. Mm -hmm. What are you telling me, Ken? What are you telling me? It's beautiful. What's beautiful? I... Seven. Seven? Why is it beautiful, Ken? Just bicycle riding. Yeah, you're bicycle riding with who? Swimming in the canal. Swimming in the canal? And what else? Just having fun. I see. Yeah. yeah relaxing more and more and now I want you to bring me and your thoughts to the point I want you to tell me Ken your mind will tell me the real truth why you do the daredevil stunts you know they're dangerous at times don't you mm. yes are they really are they really something that frighten you in a way mm -mm. <laughs> no but they're frightening but what does it tell you when you do it Ken you're going from seven to eight any age you want to mm. think of why do you want to do the daredevil stunts, Ken? I want you to tell me. Think of your past. You know why, don't you? You do know why, don't you? I want you to tell me why, because you did say you're sharing Ken Carter or Kenneth Polachek with the public, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why? It's hard to come out, I know. You find it difficult to really tell us, right, because you keep... You've been keeping this a secret, haven't you? Mm. You've been keeping this a secret. Your head lifts up and your eyelids fall down with a heavy weight. And you do realize and you do recall. You've been keeping it a secret, haven't you? Mm. I want you to tell me and your listening public what that secret is. Your mind relaxes. I'm supporting mm. your head here. What is the reason, Ken, why you take these jumps? Why you're going to take this unbelievable feat? That unbelievable jump at Lake Champlain in July 76. July the 17th, is that right? 76. Mm. Is that right? Why? Why do you want to do it, Ken? Why do you do all the other things? Why are you going to do this jump at San Air, jumping over 12 trucks or cars or station wagons, whatever it is? It's 12 of something. Oh. Why? Your mind. I know you're emotional now, aren't you? You feel a little upset. You even mm. feel like crying, don't you? Do you feel a little sad about this? Mm -hmm. Yes, you feel like crying. Well, you go ahead and cry. That's uh. okay. Your voice, your mind tells uh. me you can feel sad. That's right. You can go ahead and cry because everybody who can show their feelings mm. is a strong man. You feel like crying, don't you, Ken? Mm. Well, go ahead and have a good, good cry. Go ahead and have a good cry. Let off that steam. Let off that pressure. Let off that pressure that's been on you for the longest time. And now you're going to realize that you're going to be able to tell me. You're going to be able to tell me exactly what's on your mind. It's starting to come to you now, isn't it, Ken? Mm -hmm. It's starting to come to you. Why do you want to be this daredevil that you want to be? For love. For love, yes. What else? For the people. For the people. For my friends. For your friends, the friends who didn't pay attention to you? The ones uh, that you have friends in now uh, that weren't friends before, is that it? Uh -huh. I see. In other words, you were a very lonely boy when uh -huh. you were young, weren't uh -huh. you? Not no more. No uh -huh. more. No Every more, right? Everybody's with me. Everybody's with you. Yeah. And what if you were to yeah. give up this year? Do you feel that everybody would leave you? Get, no. You're strong. You've made your name. Mm -hmm. But Ken, you've also made a promise to yourself and to the public mm -hmm. that you are going to continue even after the daredevil stunts mm -hmm. that you're going to continue to help youngsters. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And when you're awakened, we'll talk about that. 
regarding mm. the helping of youngsters. And what's the main, main reason? Mm. Obviously, it wasn't hard to tell me that you wanted love, you wanted mm. attention, you wanted people. But there's one big, big reason. And what is that, Ken? What is that? What's the main reason why you take these things into your hands and these routines into the procedure of your livelihood? What do you mm. do it for, Ken? Because it's dangerous. Yes, and what does danger mean to you? I can defeat it. You can defeat it. Mm. In other words, you want to really and truly fight any challenge that you come across, right? Mm -hmm. You've been made to feel weak, but you've made yourself strong. Is that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Monster. Monster. You feel like a monster? Mm. I see. We've, as long as you can. We, we... Pardon? We have... We're... We have what, Ken? Created. Yes? A monster. A monster. Who has created the monster in Ken Carter? Who? I don't know. Who do you think created the monster in you? Life? Teacher. Teacher? Father? Uh -huh. I see. The kids have banged you around uh -huh. quite a bit, huh? I uh -huh. see. They'll be there. Pardon? They'll, all They'll be, be there. there and you'll show them, won't you? Uh -huh. Well, in the future, Ken, you're going to utilize this as your livelihood, but you will not be using this as a means of attention. Uh -uh. That emotional gap is no longer there because you're well aware of why you're doing it, aren't uh -huh. you? When I count a five, Ken, you'll immediately awaken. The moment you awaken, you're going to feel terrific. You're going to feel fabulous. You're going to feel as if you had 48 hours of sleep. Tremendous, invigorated, to the point of unbelievable feeling. When I count a five, you'll awaken. Feeling as good as ever on top of this world, a smile will come to your face from ear to ear. You're going back from seven to eight. You're coming back to reality. Nine, ten, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, thirty, thirty-two. You're becoming the man, the man of today, without reasons as before, but with logic as per what has happened to you. You've learned a lot about yourself, haven't you? Mm -hmm. When I count to five, you're thirty-seven, you're thirty-eight. You're 39. One, two, three, four, five. We have Ken Carter back with us. Hi, Ken. Hi. <laughs> How are and you? you'll notice, um, everybody here, the tears in his eyes, Hi. which is the proof of a man. Hey, you Ken Carter. Of, hey. You don't have to be shy of the tears, but I just want the onlooking people and the... Um, the uh, movie camera... Leo right Evans, here. come on in, please. Leo really Evans of the really National really Film Board and Bob Forche and his crew are here. To really and truly see the tears in this gentleman's eyes, and he is a man. How do you feel, Ken? Oh. I feel good. As good as, uh, as good as you thought last Monday? Remember when we went into Dr. Zurich's office feel... after after seeing uh, Mr. Mr. Picarvi? Yeah. Yes, that's right. I, I feel relaxed. You do? Sure, it's beautiful. <laughs> even all these people here. Even. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel really? more relaxed even than the last time? Yes. Good. Yes. This is because I brought out emotional disrupt disruptive emotional material that you were not too well aware of before. But in preliminary examination and questioning, I was sort of playing the game of associating everything I heard into the next thing. You understand that uh, in doing a regression. Uh, one could not be this successful this fast was it a situation let's say where he was not that susceptible a person but because Ken is honest with himself and wants to be honest with the public his imagination causes him to be an unbelievable subject mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've this, worked with many but this, this guy, is somebody oh, wait a minute this guy's really if as anybody out there in the listening audience wants to at any time go under and take this hypnotic situation for relaxation i will tell you personally relaxing i have never ever been as relaxed as i am all right, right now, now we we should mention that charlie hart has just motioned to me and he he'd like to say something here on the air go ahead charlie yeah i uh just wanted to know ken if you feel any older because uh, i think mr Mc uh, picarvi uh put you a year up well, maybe that's looking forward to what we got coming. Maybe I'll survive and surpass July Fourth, nineteen seventy-four. Hey, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you did, Reuben Picarvi, go to age, uh, age thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Yeah, 
Uh, purposely? Yes, I did. I wanted him to be well ahead of the game. Uh, can you move in a little bit to the microphone? I wanted him to be well ahead of the game so that when he does get to 39... Put it this way, at the moment of 37, mm -hmm. when he came into this office, he came in with somewhat of a dilemma, which is the information mm -hmm. I got out of him. And if I can put him ahead of what this was, in other words, this is a has-been, it's old baby shoes, he can't wear them anymore, and therefore I put him into the category of one or two years ahead, so that he's now facing reality of being the matured Ken Carter of today, as opposed to the... Uh, you know, oppression or the bringing out of the information that could have caused him a disruptive situation. Ken, what do you think? Because you, he, Ken Carter, I've got to paint this picture for you, has got his arm around Ruben Picard really, now. <laughs> he is truly a friend and truly beautiful, and I just don't know what to say other than, uh, wow, it's really beautiful. All right, let me remind the people that they are tuned to a very special segment of Sports Rap on CFOX, and uh, maybe we can open the lines now. Ken, what do you think? Uh, do you want to talk to some oh, people? Oh, th them people out there. That's what it's They're all about. They're your people. Really? 630-8611-790-0933. Ken Carter will be jumping at San Air this Sunday afternoon. And uh, Ken, help me out here because I was at your press conference earlier this afternoon. You will jump some cars or trucks? Uh, there, Ted, there are 14 cars, Chevrolet cars. From Charland in Granby. Right. Sh Charland Chev Olds Cadillac in Granby. And I met Danielle Charland at the press conference this afternoon. And, and may I take this moment mm -hmm. and say to all of the people that were affiliated with uh, the people that came to the press conference at Molson, I want to thank Serge Arpin, who made it all possible at Molson Brewery. We uh, fired up the jet car on the street and demonstrate the kind of power it really does have. And I... It's just beautiful. It's really beautiful, this situation I'm in right now. All right, let me do a little business here, and we'll come back to Ruben Picarvi and Ken Carter, the mad Canadian, the man who will be jumping at San Air. And I think those of you, perhaps, who listen closely, as Charlie Hart and the crew from the National Film Board, Bob Forche, Lynn Evans, and the rest of the guys here from the NFB, I think we all know a little bit more about Ken Carter, and I have to tell you, the only thing that Carter asked me for was a copy of the tape of this show. <laughs> because, Ken, I guess you want to hear what you did say. Well, really, you know, whatever it was, it must have been good because I feel relaxed. And I, I don't know, uh, for the people out there that are somewhat religious, if you go to church and after you leave church you feel a feeling of peace and serenity, and believe me, that's what I feel right now. By no means is Reuben Bacarvi a priest of any kind, but he certainly is my friend. And he is not a medical doctor, as he was very quick to tell you in his office Monday in the Pierrefo Medical Center. And one time, I think that, you know, it's natural because you're sitting in a medical building, and you did call him doctor. And, Reuben, what did you say? I said, don't call me doctor. I Because he's not. I can doctor people in the sense of the word, but I'm not a doctor because the reference to doctor is usually MD, and I don't want to create a fallacy in the eyes of the public or the listening public now. But I want to uh, mention something about uh, a very interesting thing that Ken just said, and that was if you have ever gone to confession or church, whatever, after you come out of there, you feel terrific. And this is exactly what hypnosis or any kind of hypnosis such as regression or uh, basic relaxation can do for somebody. This is called purgative cleansing or cleansing of a charge. By him, meaning Ken Carter, sitting there prior to the hypnosis loaded up with this unbelievable information that we found out about him, this is actually there. It is manifested. It is in the subconscious mind as a fixation. It does not come out to us in a typewritten form or a typewritten sheet, but it does come to us in symptomatology, such as pains in the chest or whatever, or in habits, such as where somebody will convert their depressed energy into a physical symptom or a habit in order to fill the emotional gap or the emotional cavity. But by Ken, letting off steam here, as you saw tears With came the tears, from this yeah. man's mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it, nobody likes to cry in front of a bunch of people, etc., etc., but yet 
uh, I would say a true man is one mm-hmm. that can let off steam. Mm-hmm. And when somebody goes to confession, basically what they're doing is mm-hmm. ridding themselves of a charge, which is called purgative cleansing. Well, to use a word that Ken Carter used a lot while uh, he was under hypnotherapy, beautiful. You kept saying beautiful. You know, because really that's what, you know, that's what it's all about. You mm-hmm. know, this, this, the fact that I am here, you know, one of the things that I talked about at the press conference, and, and I wanted to illustrate to the public, and I'm on this show, and I certainly thank you, you know, Ted, for your opportunity to allow me to do this, is that we, we have been through the era of jumping. We have the Knievel situation. A lot of other things have happened over the past few years. But all I want, you know, as I travel throughout the United States, I fly that Canadian flag very proudly. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned that at the press conference. There's one of the things that I do. I want the people, I'm going to jump. July 4th, 1976, and I'm doing it for Canada. I'm doing it for my people out there, for my son, Peter, for my ex-wife, Claire, for everybody. I'm doing it for Canada, and I need their support. I don't need to be ridiculed or to step on, but I need support, mm-hmm. and there's no place else I'm going to get it than right here in Montreal. And thanks to you, Ted, and for Bob Forchi and everybody, it's just a beautiful thing. I'm getting an opportunity to celebrate Well, all the Dominion press was Day. there today. Al Colley oh. was there. Uh, Toto Gingra was here before. You you obviously saw him of the Journal de Montréal yeah. and the Sunday Express before. They're, they're, they were there to see you and probably to, uh, uh, well, you see the press here in Montreal, and I'm a member of that. They're good people. I've had my, my innings with the press of New York. I don't care for them too much. But here I have found that the the people, the men and women who make up uh, uh, my peers in this city are good people. And they were there to see and to mm-hmm. meet you. And they hung on every word that you said through that microphone at your press conference. It was beautiful. It and was that's beautiful. what it's about. Let really. me take a moment here and interrupt uh, Ruben Picarvey and Ken Carter to catch up with my business. Dorian Suit. And I am wearing a Dorian suit. The National Film Board, they know that because I think Bob Forche is sitting on my jacket right <laughs> No, you're not. You're not really Bob Forche. I was just kidding. It's on the chair beside you. Dorian suit has four easy-to-get-to locations. It all started in Lachine, 2939 Notre Dame. Charlie Hart, is that a Dorian? The truth now. No. It's not. It isn't. I haven't I been there. I you haven't been there. there. No. All right, listen carefully. Listen carefully. 2939 Notre Dame and Lachine, or the main store, 150 Harwood Boulevard. It's also the home of the ladies' boutique. They're open till 9 o'clock tonight for the people of Hawkesbury. I guess you're not far from La Chute. And, of course, all the rations will be done for you on the spot. The numbers here on Sports Wrap, and many of you have started to call in. No question is a stupid question when you're dealing with something like this. And I must first and foremost tell you, I am a novice at hypnotherapy. The only thing I know is what I have seen Ruben Picarvi do. I saw a stage show that he that he gave a couple of weeks ago that was marvelous. It gave me the idea when Ken Carter phoned me. Perhaps we could find out why a man, instead of being a doctor, a lawyer, a chartered accountant, or a carpenter, or a bricklayer, why does he want to become a man who will defy death? and jump over 13, 14 cars. This is the way it all started. I contacted Ruben Picarvi immediately. Then I contacted Ken Carter. We had permission from both people, and this is the culmination. So now that Ken is back from his deep sleep, as uh, Mr. Picarvi calls it, you will have the opportunity to talk to him, and we'll go to the lines in a moment. Dixieville Furniture can make it a little easier for you for Father's Day. You want to buy your, your dad something nice? How about his own chair? a reclining chair. In addition to that, Dixieville Furniture will ship it to your home free. In other words, free delivery. And another thing, they accept Charge X and Master Charge at Dixieville Furniture in the Point Claire Shopping Center. One more thing that Dixieville has on its mind, and I'd like to tell you, they have all sorts of reclining chairs for Father. Father's Day this Sunday. And Dixieville is open... Ken Carter nods. It is Father's Day. And Dixieville will be open until 9 o'clock tonight. We found a place we'd like to make our home. We're ready to go there. We're looking forward to the times again. And the friends we'll get to know there. And old friends that come over. Going home to your world. Going home to your world, going home, going home to 50, nothing like a different. 
This is CFOX, Radio 1470, and this is Sports Wrap with Ted Teban. I think Reuben, uh, Reuben Picarfi is a little hungry now after, after the work that he's been doing. I'll tell you a little bit more about Reuben Picarfi and how he works and so on, but we'll, we'll first, maybe we could send out for a Delalo burger for Mr. Reuben. Oh, you like that, eh? Reuben Picarfi, he knows class. Now, here's what's going to happen. Delalo's is moving from its original location in Villamard. The five brothers have done it again. They're moving to a beautiful store in Villamard, and the 23rd of this month will be open house there. Charlie Hart, if you're in town, I'd like you to drop into the Lalo's that night, and you will be one of the one of the people honored there by Carlo and the other four brothers. 47 years ago, a gentleman called Luigi de Lalo started a very, very small little store, a little restaurant with hamburgers, and it's grown since then. There is a store, a brand new store in Brassard on Grand Allee, but there are 15 authentic Delalo stores on and off the island of Montreal. If you don't see the picture of the five brothers hanging on the wall, you are not in an authentic Delalo store, and that's all I can tell you. Roxy. Oh, I have to tell you about Roxy. How about the superstar McGarrity? We haven't heard from the superstar all afternoon. Johnny R. McGarrity just flying around in there. Maybe you could make him into a stunt driver or daredevil, uh, Ken Carter. Let us hear from Johnny R. right now. This is John R., your ordinary superstar. 